The consoles of Generation 8 that we've come to know and love since 2013 are soon to be leaving us. Not literally, of course, unless you're trading it in to get a sweet deal on the, I assume, next-gen black cuboids underneath the TV, but the Xbox One and PS4 are soon to become semi-obsolete. E3 isn't too far away, and with Sony bailing on the conference much like EA have recently done, Microsoft have got one hell of a spotlight to reveal the rumoured multiple Xbox Scarlet systems. But for this list, let's take a look at Team Blue. Not like we do enough of that already, but we've heard dribs and drabs about what's to come for the PlayStation 5, assuming that's what it's going to be called. I'm pretty certain that's what it's going to be called. Thanks to patents being filed and musings from industry leakers with strong track records, we can piece together what's to come within the next two-ish years? While the PS4 took very little from the PlayStation 3 in terms of design and technical execution, it's safe to say the PS5 will have some aspects being very, very similar to that of the PS4, since it has worked in Sony's favour as they've dominated the market over the last five years. We don't know when we'll actually hear about the PS5 or when Gen 9 will actually kick off for both parties, but let's relay what we know so far, shall we? I'm Rich from What Culture Gaming, and this is the PS5, eight confirmed features we already know. Number eight, faster start times for games. Back in the day, you plugged a cartridge into your console, flicked a switch, and boom, there was your game. But the once solid argument about simple plug and play, no fuss stuff with consoles was made completely redundant in Generation 8. Games are bigger than ever these days, something we'll get to a little later on, so there's a mighty fine chance you'll be installing X amount of gigabytes from the disc to your hard drive just to get the entire game opened up and ready to play. With day one patches and extra bits and pieces being installed too, you're probably not going to be playing whatever game you wish within seconds of tearing the plastic from the box like you used to. While the suspend and resume feature on the PS4 is fantastic, Sony are supposedly working on something to make loading games even faster on their next flagship system. Aptly named Reset Era user Console Lover discovered that Sony were working on a means of having next-gen games launch so quickly it would be as if you were loading that game from a cartridge. This was backed up that little bit further by Sony filing a patent to that effect. If you do some jargon digging in the technical department, it looks to be some sort of RAM-intensive loading system, making it so loading into something, probably one specific save point and nothing else to make the system actually work, very, very quick indeed. Number 7. Renewed VR Support VR was a tough sell in the console market. Up to the release of the PSVR, all console gamers saw from VR in the PC space was an overpriced, borderline gimmicky headset with a couple of experiences to boot, not really any full-on games. However, VR in said PC space was becoming very popular, with more interesting experiences coming to light. Nothing like a full 60-hour open-world game, but moderately short-term, unique experiences that are just a lot of fun to play. Look at Job Simulator or Beat Saber. So when the PSVR did launch, it was still met with some skepticism. Not only based on what pure VR titles will be launching with it, but also how well it would run on console hardware. In a pretty surprising turn of events, the PSVR was quite a success, even if 75% of those sales was our own job. Josh Brown stockpiling headsets in some crazy scheme to build some sort of ultimate bongo machine. As of recording, around 92 million PS4 units have been sold, which is absolutely staggering. Out of those 92 million, only 3 million of those consoles have a PSVR unit plugged in. Now, 3 million isn't a number to shake a stick at, but compared to 92 million, that's pretty low. Saying that though, Sony were blown away by those numbers, as they were expecting it to do nowhere near as well as that. Title support for the PSVR has been strong and stable, as looking at E3's and PlayStation experiences, Sony aren't treating this as a fad, a side project, which is most likely why, if not definitely why, it has become such a success. So what about the PS5 then? Since the PSVR has been a success, there is a very good chance that VR will be a mainstay of the next Sony system. Hopefully we won't see Sony push VR on everyone with the release of the console, echoing the disastrous Kinect 2.0 fiasco with the launch of the Xbox One, but it looks to be that the process of getting VR onto the PS5 will be dead simple. Whereas the current PSVR has an extra box you need to have wired in to get everything working, the PS5 will have all of this functionality and compatibility built into the base console. As to whether we get the PSVR 2 bundled in with the PS5, again echoing Kinect 2.0, I think Sony won't be so silly. At least, I hope they won't. Number 6. It will have a disk drive We're always hearing musings about the physical format dying out. Hell, people thought the PS4 and Xbox One weren't going to support physical media. There are rumours of a diskless Xbox One coming, but that doesn't speak for what's next. Industry analysts are sure that disk drives on consoles aren't going anywhere, since selling physical media keeps relationships between Sony and Microsoft and brick-and-mortar stores healthy, as they rely more on the in-store sales of consoles themselves. Sales figures over the last year or so have pointed to digital sales of titles dwarfing that of buying a disk 
disc in a box, but digital downloads are not for everyone. Countries such as Australia have strict caps on data, so going download only removes a sizable chunk from the potential market. It could be that Sony follow potential suit of Microsoft and release a discless PS5. The new Xboxes might have this option too, but if you're someone who swears by physical media, you'll be fine. Number 5. The disc format will be 128GB Blu-ray XL discs. Yep, discs definitely aren't dead. Echoing both the disc tray entry and the initial installation whinging, Sony took to be countering the bothersome installing or downloading X amount of bits onto the system's hard drive to play a game by simply making the playable discs bigger. Blu-ray XL or BD XL discs have existed for almost a decade now, but since video games have become exponentially larger over time, it makes sense to use a format more suited to titles surpassing 60GB in size, since most box standard Blu-ray discs currently out there cap at about 50GB. Industry reports state that Sony will be using using four-layer BDXL discs, each capable of holding a whopping 128 gigabytes of data each. So those huge titles like Red Dead 2 or Destiny 2 hopefully won't be taking as much space on your system's hard drive in the future. Of course, that depends on how much bigger games do get, but 128 gigabytes on a disc will hopefully keep more chuff off your internal drive. No surprises then that these larger Blu-ray discs will cost more to produce, but as to whether the increased production cost will be reflected in the price we're actually having to pay for the game, we'll wait and see. My guess is that it won't be, but we have seen a premium on proprietary formats before. I say before, it's actually right now with Nintendo Switch cartridges, but since there's a good chance that Team Xbox might be adopting this format too, it won't exactly be proprietary. Good news on both sides then, really. Number 4. A more user-friendly PSN one of the biggest complaints with PSN dating back to the PS3 is the rather awkward infrastructure of the service itself, namely the lack of accessibility features compared to that of Xbox Live, and worst of all, the fact that you still can't change your username. That is about to be sorted, but still, it's only taken them over a decade. PSN on the PS4 hasn't always been terrible, they've been adding encouraging improvements as time goes on, but it looks to be that something entirely new is in the works at Sony, ready for the PS5. Windows Central writer and industry sleuth Jez Corden has said that he's heard that Sony are muttering about a big infrastructure and platform update in time for the next PlayStation, and that there'll be a heavy focus on cloud technology. Given that Sony could do a lot more with PSN, it's good to hear that something more intuitive and user-friendly could be on the way. Number 3. It'll run on AMD Ryzen CPU technology Numerous reports have said that Sony will continue their relationship with AMD, the folk behind the chipset used in the PS4. AMD's Ryzen line of processors are very popular among PC users for their bang-for-their-buck capabilities, and it looks to be that the PS5 will be rocking said Ryzen chip when it eventually goes public. Developers haven't had many if any problems at all developing games to the PS4's Ryzen architecture, unlike when they were trying to get their heads around the PS3's ridiculously complicated way of doing things, so it makes sense for Sony to keep the means of production outside of hardware nice and simple. If you're completely lost amidst this processor gobbledygook, basically the PS5 will be much more powerful than the PS4. Duh, it sounds obvious, but the inclusion of Ryzen means it's going to be comparable to a pretty good gaming PC. I just heard a collective shudder from some PC gamers out there as I say consoles might end up being comparable to proper gaming PCs, but that's genuine a good thing. Consoles have been pretty behind the times hardware-wise when it comes to comparing it to the most recent PC hardware, and for kind of good reason. It's cheaper. However, as PC hardware has continued to evolve, the aforementioned bang-for-your-buck hardware is definitely more apparent, making it a perfect fit for next-generation consoles. Sony jumping straight to AMD's Ryzen line is an absolutely brilliant move for the system. Of course, as of right now, we're not entirely sure as to what the rest of the hardware is inside the PS5, and as to whether what spec of components used will help or hinder the system overall. Either way, with it being Ryzen in the first place, it's looking pretty damn good. Number 2. Finally, some V-Sync support. More technical jargon now. You love it really. VSync is basically utilizing a feature where the graphics processor renders the game itself at the same frame rate as your display. If a processor is rendering out a game at more frames per second than what your display can actually display, then things start to look a bit skew with, and the game visually looks to be tearing apart horizontally. VSync and consoles in the same conversation don't really go hand in hand because it's very much more of a PC thing. But as mentioned, the PS5 might be stacking up more to a modern PC spec. Therefore, more PC-centric features could make their way onto consoles. If the PS5 can achieve a solid 60 FPS or even surpass it on a rendering level, the inclusion of VSync will make your viewing experience a damn sight better. Imagine that, the PS5 consistently hitting 1080p 60. What an age we'd live in. And number one, backwards compatibility is finally happening. Even though Sony did crush the market across Gen 8 with the PS4, they were lacking in one department, backwards compatibility. The Xbox brand were making a name for themselves in the latter few years as a legacy platform, something Sony seemed pretty reluctant to have themselves do. Now, you can get some classic PlayStation games on the store or subscribe to PS Now, but Xbox did it in such a way to not take more money from people's pockets, and by Jove, it worked. 
No surprises then that Sony going into Generation 9 have thankfully taken note. Yet another patent filed by Sony outlines the practice of, inverted commas, remastering games by emulation. More specifically, the patent refers to using legacy software discs, so old games if you're not down with the lingo, and then downloading remastered visuals and audio files to improve the experience on new hardware. Sounds pretty similar to what Xbox are doing, right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing, as it's something everyone wants. Finally, I can play my PS1 copy of Disney Magical Racing Tour in 4K 60fps or something. Hopefully. And there we have it. That's everything we know so far about the PlayStation 5. Are you looking forward to this new system, or are you wanting a few more years out of your PS4? Let me know in the comment section down below, and why not head over to our new Teespring store? We've got some pretty cool shirts, even if I do say so myself. I've been Rich, you can follow me on Twitter at PickofChangeToe, and we'll see you tomorrow.